In this video, we're going to start talking about the unit circle. So this is pretty much one of the most important concepts in trigonometry uh, and also beyond trig. So if you go on to things like calculus, uh, you'll definitely want to know the unit circle pretty thoroughly. So uh, if you want a copy of this worksheet to follow along with, um, check the video description. There's a link in there. You can click that link, uh, open this up and print it out. So in this video, what we're going to do is fill this in, just starting with a blank unit circle, we're going to fill in all the values here. So all the angles and all the corresponding points uh, for the special angles around the unit circle here. Uh, we're going to fill this in. And then in the next video, uh, starting in the next video, we're going to talk about why those numbers are important, uh, how they relate to trig, how they're useful, and we'll start doing a bunch of examples also. Okay, so first of all, before we start, I want to point out that uh, if you have to fill in a unit circle, it's really, it's going to be so much easier if you uh, memorize the first quadrant. So that means, let's zoom in a little bit here. So memorize the first quadrant. Uh, so first of all, what is the first quadrant? Well, first of all, this is a unit circle. So the equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. And the unit circle has radius 1 and center 0, 0. Okay. So what that means is if we think of this as being on the xy plane, uh, this right here is the origin. So this is the point 0, 0. Uh, this is the x-axis. Okay, this is the x-axis. So let's extend it a little bit. So here's our x-axis. And uh, this right here is the y-axis. Okay, this is the y-axis. So we can extend that a little bit. Okay, not really necessary, but it does kind of help us visualize that this is just uh, a circle in the xy plane. So uh, it really is just a special kind of circle. Um, not even that special. It's just x squared plus y squared equals 1. So that means the radius is 1 and the center is at 0, 0. Okay? So uh, the first quadrant is up here, right? Here's quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So going back to what we were saying uh, about a minute ago, uh, if you have to fill in a unit circle, it's going to be really, really easy, uh, much easier if you just remember the first quadrant. So the first quadrant is uh, these guys up here. So this angle and that corresponding point, this angle and the corresponding point, this angle and the corresponding point. Uh, and also, uh, if you know this angle and this angle and their corresponding points, uh, filling in the rest of the unit circle is going to be so much easier. Okay? But until then, you know, what if you uh, don't have this memorized or what if you're having trouble memorizing it? Well, we'll talk about some tricks for that too. So first, what we're going to do here is fill in this uh, first quadrant. Okay, just starting from absolutely nothing, we're going to fill all this in. And then uh, what's nice about the unit circle is it has a lot of nice symmetry here. So even though we have no numbers here, you might already see there's a lot of uh, symmetry going on here. So like this point and this point, they're kind of reflections of each other over the y-axis, right? So they're uh, kind of symmetrical in that sense. Just like uh, this point and this point, they're symmetric or kind of reflections of each other over the x-axis, and so on and so forth. So we're going to use these symmetry properties to fill in the rest of the circle. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the first quadrant here. So what you really want to remember is uh, the special angles here are... Uh, pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over 6, okay? So that's a pi. But what if you're not sure which one goes where? So, you know, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, definitely have those memorized as special angles on the unit circle in the first quadrant, okay? But what if you don't know which one goes where? So you know that, uh, that those are going to be these three angles, but which one is which? Well, what you could remember, um, so a trick for remembering that, is, uh, well, first you can think about, okay, 6 is the largest denominator. So if I divide by a larger denominator, I'm going to have a smaller value. Okay, so which of these three angles is the smallest? Well, here's an angle here. This angle is larger because it opens up farther, right? So these are all angles in standard position. So here's the initial side, the positive x-axis. They all open out like this, okay? They're all opening out uh, counterclockwise. So the smallest one is this angle right here. Okay, so this one should have the largest denominator, and the largest denominator is 6. Okay, the next uh, smallest one after that is going to be the next largest denominator, which is 4, and then the only one left is 3. Okay? Um, if you don't like that, we will talk about another trick for that later on uh, that's different. But anyway, so another thing you can think about is, okay, pi, pi over 6 uh, is closest to the x-axis. Okay. So pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis. Okay. So pi over 6, 
um, between these three angles here, pi over 6 is the one that's closest to the x-axis. So 6 has an x in it, x-axis um, has an x in it, two x's in fact. So anyway, pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis, so let's go ahead and label this angle here pi over 6. Okay. So you can use this trick to remember between these three angles, pi over 6 is going to be this one right here, which is the closest to the x-axis. Okay. Okay, so uh, this angle right here is pi over 6, so that's pi over 6. Okay, uh, now we also have this other angle here, and this other angle up here. Okay. So one of them is pi over 4, and the other one is pi over 3. Which one is which? Well, we can use that same trick that we talked about. Um, let's zoom out just a bit. So remember, a larger denominator means a smaller angle. Okay, a larger denominator means a smaller angle because you're dividing by a larger number. So since 4 is larger than 3, pi over 4 is smaller than pi over 3. So pi over 4 should be the smaller angle. Which angle is smaller? This one right here. Okay, because that's pi over, uh, this is smaller, so it's pi over 4. If you don't like that, there's another way of thinking about it. So if that's pi over 4, then uh, this one has to be pi over 3, because it's the only one of these three left. Okay? So if you don't like thinking about it like that, um, it's a good idea to get used to it, because it's a pretty useful thing to think about in math. Um, but until then, if you don't like that, um, just remember that, remember pi over 2 radians, uh, pi over 2 radians is 90 degrees, right? So 90 degrees would be, if we start here, the 90 degrees would put us up here, right? So pi over 2 radians would be this guy right here. Okay, pi over 2. Okay, so let's zoom in here. Okay, so pi over 2 radians is going to put us right here. Uh, now pi over 4 is half of that, right? Pi over 4 is 1 half of pi over 2. Okay, so let's write that down. Uh, pi over 4. Pi over 4 is 1 half of pi over 2. Okay, so if you take pi over 2, multiply it by a half, you get pi over 4, right? Well, if pi over 2 is right here, okay, if pi over 2 is this 90 degree angle, what's half of that? Well, half of that is going to be halfway this angle right here uh, that cuts this quadrant in half like that, right? So pi over 4 is 1 half of pi over 2. If pi over 2 is right here, pi over 4 is half of that, okay? So there's, uh, so already we've talked about a bunch of different ways to remember this. Uh, first quadrant. So what you could do is think about, okay, I know these are the special angles in the first quadrant. Larger denominator means a smaller angle. This angle is the smallest, so it's pi over 6. The next smallest is pi over 4. The next one is pi over 3. Okay. If you don't like that, just remember, okay, pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis. Pi over 6 closest to the x-axis. Okay. So that's why this one is pi over 6 uh, right here. Um, and then after that, remember pi over 4 is just uh, one half of pi over two. Okay, so pi over four equals one half of pi over two. And uh, definitely know that pi over two radians is 90 degrees, so that puts you here. So pi over four would be half of that, which puts you over here. Okay, so um, now what we wanna do, let's, so what I'm gonna do from now on, since we don't really have enough room in here, uh, I'm gonna label the angles up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start doing that. So the angle corresponding to here is pi over six. Uh, the angle corresponding to here is pi over four. This would be pi over 3, and uh, this guy is pi over 2. Okay. okay, so I'm doing this because when we fill in the rest of the unit circle, it's going to make it all uh, much easier. Okay, now what we want to do is fill in the coordinates of these points. Okay, So first of all, let's also talk about this one. So if we just have this angle right here, uh, what's this angle? It's just 0, right? 0 radians. So remember, um, for angles in standard position, uh, they have initial side on the positive x-axis, um, and uh, the vertex is at the origin. And when we talk about angles on the unit circle, uh, all the angles are in standard position. So remember that definition from a while ago. Anyway, this is an angle of uh, zero radians. Okay, now let's talk about the points on the circle. So what are the coordinates of this point? Well, remember the unit circle uh, has radius one and center at the origin. Okay, so the coordinates of this point are gonna be one comma zero. Okay, one comma zero. All right, so that's uh, pretty straightforward. It's just a point on the unit circle on the far right part of it. Uh, and remember, this zero is for zero radians. So this here, at pi over two radians, what's, uh, what are the coordinates of this point right here at pi over two radians? So that's directly on the top of the unit circle. And again, it's uh, radius one and center at the origin, zero, zero. So this right here is the point uh, zero comma one. Okay, that's the point zero comma one, okay? So those are pretty straightforward, not too difficult to remember. Um, but memorizing these, it's gonna make it uh, easier to get the coordinates for this point and this point, although those won't really be difficult anyway. 
um, relatively. So now let's talk about these three points here. Okay? So the coordinates of uh, this point at pi over 6. So again, you really uh, want to have them memorized to make filling this in uh, go much more quickly. But um, until then, let's see. So first of all, what we could keep in mind is that everything's going to be over 2. Okay? Everything is over 2. Okay, so we have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate at each point, and all of them are over 2. So for this pi over 6, the x-coordinate is something over 2, the y-coordinate is something over 2. Um, here, the x-coordinate is something over 2, the y-coordinate is something over 2. Same thing at this pi over 3. Something over 2, something over 2. All right, now what, is, what are they over 2? Well, what they are, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. They're going to be just 1, 2, 3, but 1, 2, 3 how? So it's going to be... Uh, the square root of 1, the square root of 2, and the square root of 3. Okay. Well, the square root of 1 is just 1, so we can drop the square root. Okay, but where do these go? Okay, where do these go? Well, remember, as we move further up, uh, well, let's talk about the x-coordinates first. As we move further to the right, okay, if we move further to the right, the x-coordinates get larger, right? So as we move from left to right, the x-coordinates get larger. So let's zoom back in here. So as we move from left to right, the x-coordinates get larger. This one is farthest to the left, so it's going to have the smallest x-coordinate. And what we just said was that the three things that we're going to use are root 1, root 2, and root 3. Which one's the smallest? Root 1 is the smallest. Okay? Um, and remember, the square root of 1 is just 1, so this guy is going to be 1. Okay? Now as we move to the right, things get larger. So this is root 2, and then this one's root 3. Okay? So remember, 1 is the same thing as the square root of 1, but since we want to keep things simplified, we're not going to write square root of 1, we're just going to write 1. Okay? Now, the exact same thing happens with the y-coordinates, but remember, y-coordinates get larger as you move up. Okay? So as you move up, y-coordinates get larger. So this is going to be the square root of 1, or in other words, just 1. This is the square root of 2. This is the square root of 3. Okay? So remember, these are the things you want to keep in mind here, root 1, root 2, root 3, or and just also remember that root 1 is the same thing as 1. So as you move from left to right, uh, the x-coordinates get larger. Uh, 1, or root 1, and root 2, and root 3. So as you move from left to right, x-coordinates get larger. As you move from bottom to top, if you move uh, upwards, the y-coordinates get larger. Okay, so that's why this is 1 half, uh, the x-coordinate here is 1 half, the x-coordinate here is root 2 over 2, the x-coordinate here is root 3 over 2, okay? and the y-coordinate here is 1 over 2, the y-coordinate here is root 2 over 2, the y-coordinate here is root 3 over 2, okay? So that's uh, that, so that's it for the first quadrant. So again, it's a really good idea to memorize the first quadrant, because now that we have that first quadrant, uh, the rest of this is really going to be uh, so much easier um, than, you know, just memorizing everything. So if you try to memorize everything, it's kind of a mess, uh, it's going to be kind of difficult, but just memorize the first quadrant, um, and if you have trouble memorizing it, uh, memorizing it, use some of the tips that we just talked about. So again, um, let's summarize those again just briefly real quick. So pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6. Larger denominator means a smaller angle. Okay, the smallest angle is here, so that should be the uh, pi over 6. The next smallest one is pi over 4. The next one is pi over 3. Okay, if you don't like that, just remember pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis, so that would be this angle right here. Um, and what about the other two? Well, just remember that pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Okay, pi over 2 radian is 90 degrees. Pi over 4 is half of that. Half of that puts you right here in the middle. Okay? So that should be pi over 4. And then this last one is pi over 3. Okay? Um, another way of thinking about that that we haven't talked about yet, notice up here is pi over 2. As we move to the right, the denominators get larger. Pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6. Okay? So as we move from left to right, the denominators here get larger. Pi over 2, then pi over 3, then pi over 4, then pi over 6. Okay? So that's yet another way of remembering that. So a lot of tips and tricks for memorizing the first quadrant. And once you have the first quadrant down, um, getting the rest of it's going to be really straightforward. Okay, so why is that? Um, well, first, let's erase this. Um, okay, so now we're going to use these symmetry properties we talked about. Okay, so the symmetry is going to make this uh, so much easier. So first, we're going to fill in the coordinates of these points. Okay, let's do that. Then we'll talk about the angles. So there's a little trick for the angles that I like to use. Um, but we'll talk about that later, because the points are going to be easier. So let's fill in the points first, okay? Um, let's start with this point. So now let's go back over here and look at this. So we see these two points here that we, we briefly mentioned this earlier, but they're like reflections of each other over the y-axis, right? So remember, this is our y-axis right here. So these two points, they're reflections of each other. 
the coordinates of this point are 1 half comma root 3 over 2. 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So if we have this point over here that's an exact reflection of that, okay, we know it's a reflection because this is a circle centered at the origin and it has a radius 1, okay, so this is definitely a reflection of that point over here. Um, so if this is positive 1 half comma root 3 over 2, then uh, that means starting on the y-axis, we move to the right 1 half units okay, to get here. We move to the right 1 half units. Well, if these two points are reflections of each other, then what that means is to get to this point, we have to move to the left 1 half units from the y-axis. So in other words, uh, the coordinates of this point are negative 1 half comma positive root 3 over 2. Okay. Now they both have the same y-coordinate, right, because they're on the same horizontal line. So if you were to draw a horizontal line through here, through these two, or if you, if you were to draw a line through these two points, it would be horizontal. So they have the same y-coordinate, positive root 3 over 2. But their x-coordinates are negatives of each other. Okay, this is positive 1 half, comma root 3 over 2. This is negative 1 half, comma root 3 over 2. Again, the reason is because they're reflections of each other over the y-axis. Okay? So uh, a, shorter, a much shorter way of saying this is, if you uh, reflect a point over the y-axis, the x-coordinate gets multiplied by negative 1. Okay? So reflect this point over the y-axis, you get this point right here, and then you multiply the x-coordinate by negative 1. And the y-coordinate stays the same. Okay? So kind of a lengthy explanation there, but it's really important to understand how the symmetry thing is working. So we can, do, uh, we can say the exact same thing. We can do the exact same thing here with these other two points. So if this is positive root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, then this one right here, okay, this is the reflection of this, so this one's going to be negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. Okay, so again, uh, the y, or sorry, the x coordinate becomes negative, it gets multiplied by negative 1, and the y coordinate stays the same. Okay, now, I uh, have to zoom out just a tiny bit here. So this, now this last point right here, um, this one is root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. This one, okay, these two points right here are reflections of each other over the y-axis. So again, uh, for this one, it's going to be the same coordinates, but the x-coordinate is going to be negative. So since this is positive root 3 over 2, comma 1 half, this guy is going to be negative root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So negative root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Okay. So that might seem kind of lengthy um, or difficult and confusing, but it's, it's really not too bad. Just keep in mind the symmetry properties. So once, uh, if you understand the symmetry properties well enough, and if you have the first quadrant memorized, these three are really just going to be automatic. So if this is 1 half comma root 3 over 2, then boom, automatically this is negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Because it's a reflection over the y-axis, so the x-coordinate becomes negative. Okay? So that's, that's sort of a pre-calculus thing, uh, reflecting over axes, things like that. It's uh, definitely something you'll want to keep in mind from pre-calculus. Um, anyway, that's the point here. And again, we'll talk about the angles later. Okay, what about this point right here? Well, this point, um, there's two ways to think about it. It's a reflection of this point over the uh, y-axis. Or you can just think, oh, okay, it's the uh, point that's farthest to the left on the unit circle. So it should be negative 1, comma, 0. Okay, but either way you think about it, it's negative 1, comma, 0. Because uh, this is 1, comma, 0, so its reflection over the y-axis would be negative 1, comma, 0. Same y-coordinate, negative x-coordinate, okay? So there's that. Now, how about down here? Okay, so down here, uh, let's zoom out a bit. So now we just filled in the second quadrant. Now we have to fill in the third quadrant here. Okay, so for the third quadrant, let's talk about this point right here. Okay, so for this point, um, well... Notice that, so when we filled in the second quadrant, we talked about reflecting over the y-axis, okay? These points are reflections over the y-axis. Well, likewise, these two points are reflections over the x-axis. These two points are reflections of each other over the x-axis, and these two points are reflections of each other over the x-axis. Now, when you reflect over the y-axis, the x-coordinate gets multiplied by negative 1. When you reflect over the x-axis, what do you think happens? Uh, yeah, the y coordinate is going to get multiplied by negative 1, and the x coordinate stays the same. Okay? So let's zoom in um, to these two points here. So if this is negative root 3 over 2, comma 1 half, what's this point going to have to be? Well, this point is going to have to be same x coordinate, right? Because they're on the same vertical line. Okay? And when you reflect over the x axis, uh, the x coordinate stays the same. So this is going to be negative root 3 over 2, comma, comma what? So that's a 3 negative root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half, okay, comma, negative 1 half.
Okay. So that's that. So again, when you reflect over the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same. So that's why this x-coordinate is still negative root 3 over 2. And the y-coordinate gets multiplied by negative 1. Okay. So um, that's why this now down here it's a negative 1 half, because now we're below the x-axis, so the y-coordinate should be negative. Okay. And also, uh, when you reflect over the x-axis, you multiply the y-coordinate by negative 1. Okay, so that's what happened there. Now, uh, let's zoom out just a bit more. Okay. So here, uh, negative, so this is negative root 2 over 2, comma, positive root 2 over 2. So if the reflection uh, point is right here, okay, so this point is a reflection of this point right here. Okay, so this point right here is a reflection of this. So again, same x-coordinate. So this is going to be negative root 2 over 2 comma what? Comma negative this y-coordinate. So this y-coordinate is root 2 over 2. So the negative is going to be uh, negative root 2 over 2. Okay. So we'll zoom in on this. Okay, so this is negative root 2 over 2. Same as the x-coordinate that's up here. Okay, negative root 2 over 2. And this y-coordinate is positive root 2 over 2. So since we reflect over the x-axis to get to this point, the y-coordinate is negative root 2 over 2. Okay? And then last, uh, same exact reasoning, uh, literally the exact same reasoning. If this is negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2, then this point down here, the reflection of that point over the x-axis, it's going to be the same x-coordinate comma negative y-coordinate. Okay? So this was negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Then this is negative 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. Okay? So that's these three points in here. And again, it's really, um, it might seem like it takes a while to do, or it might seem like it's really lengthy because I'm just uh, going through all the details, taking a while to explain it. But again, once you have this first quadrant, just symmetry automatically, boom. 1 half comma root 3 over 2, reflect over the y-axis. So that's negative 1 half comma positive root 3 over 2. Reflect over the x-axis to get this point. Negative 1 half, same x-coordinate, comma, uh, negative root 3 over 2 down here. Okay, negative y-coordinate. Okay, so it's really, it's just, it's, if you understand the symmetry properties and know the first quadrant, uh, it just goes so quickly. Um, okay, what about this point right here? Okay, so two ways to think about it, um, just like with this one. So this point right here is a reflection of this point over the x-axis. If this is 0, comma 1, this is 0, comma negative 1. Okay. Or you could just think, oh, hey, it's the point that's at the very bottom of the unit circle. The unit circle has radius 1, center origin. So this has to be 0, comma, negative 1. Okay. All right, so uh, these points here on the axes, they're really not too bad, just 1s and zeros. Um, just uh, make sure you remember the xy plane, how it's set up, and things like that. So those aren't really too bad. Okay. Now this last part in here, uh, for the fourth quadrant, it's going to be done exactly the same way that we did quadrant 3, exactly the same way we did quadrant 2. As long as you know quadrant 1, it's going to be totally fine. Okay. But now uh, with quadrant 4, we could actually use quadrant 3 or quadrant 1. Um, so we can think of it as reflecting these points over the y-axis, or we could reflect these points over the x-axis. It does not matter at all how you think about it. Uh, either way is going to be totally fine, as long as you just remember how to do it. Um, so let's zoom in here. Let's reflect over the y-axis because we can squeeze more into the picture. Um, okay, so if this is negative 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2, what are the coordinates of this point going to be? Well, uh, if this x coordinate is negative one half, then this coordinate, or sorry, this point right here, these two points are reflections of each other over the y axis. So the x coordinate here is going to be positive, whatever this is. So it's going to be positive one half, and the y coordinate is exactly the same. Okay, negative root three over two. Just like up here, these x coordinates are negatives of each other. Okay, these x coordinates are negatives of each other, um, and the y coordinates are the same. Okay, it's the exact same thing down here because we're still we're reflecting over the y-axis again. Okay, so negative one half comma negative root three over two, positive one half comma same y-coordinate negative root three over two. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit. Um, okay, what about this point right here? Well, this point right here is a reflection of this point over the y-axis. So if this is negative root two over two comma negative root two over two then this point right here is going to be positive root 2 over 2, comma, keep the y-coordinate the same, negative root 2 over 2. Okay? All right, and then lastly, this point here. Uh, so if this point is negative root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half, 
then this point, which is the reflection of this over the y-axis, uh, is going to be the x-coordinate is going to be positive root 3 over 2. So the x-coordinate is positive root 3 over 2. And the y-coordinate is the same as this guy, negative 1 half. Okay. Negative 1 half. OK, so uh, that's it for the points. Now we're going to fill in the angles. And uh, there's tricks for those, too, which I'll talk about. So that's it for the points. And again, I just want to point out, um, well, before we do that, let's so we got the fourth quadrant by reflecting these third quadrant points over the y-axis. Let's briefly just see real quick, what if we reflect the first quadrant point over the x-axis? I just want to show you that it works out like that, too. If this is root 3 over 2 comma 1 half, then this point down here, let's zoom out just a bit, this point down here is root 3 over 2, okay, same x-coordinate, comma negative 1 half, so negative y-coordinate. Same x-coordinate, negative y-coordinate. How about over here? Root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. This one is same x-coordinate, negative y-coordinate, okay? Root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2. How about this one up here? If this is 1 half root 3 over 2, reflect over the x-axis, you got the same x-coordinate, but now the y-coordinate becomes negative, multiply by negative 1. So this is 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so just want to point out that you can think of it uh, either way here when you fill in the fourth quadrant. Okay, and again, just to summarize uh, so far, so we talked about some tips and tricks for memorizing the first quadrant. Okay, we talked about those near the beginning of the video. And once you have the first quadrant memorized, filling in the points is just so simple and straightforward as long as you understand the symmetry properties. Okay, so just know that when you reflect over the y-axis, keep the y-coordinate the same, multiply the x-coordinate by negative 1. When you reflect over the x-axis, keep the x-coordinate the same, and multiply the y-coordinate by negative 1. Okay, it really is that simple and straightforward. Okay, um, that's it for the points. Now let's talk about the angles. Okay. And by the way, if it doesn't seem simple or straightforward now, um, the more you practice, the more you do with this, it, it will get easier and it will seem more straightforward. So if it seems kind of stressful or difficult now, really don't worry about it. Um, it is kind of a new concept. It just takes a lot of practice. Sometimes not even a lot, just uh, you might get it before you know it really. Um, just if you work through a bunch of examples, uh, which we will do later, then it'll be fine. Okay, so now what we want to do is fill in the rest of the angles here. All right, so um, there's a few ways to think about it. There's really one way that I like to teach. So uh, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. Um, let's fill in the rest of the stuff over 3. Okay, so let's go back to the board here. Now what we're going to do is this. Um, we're going to write pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, Four, uh, sorry, 3 pi over 3, getting ahead of myself a little bit, 3 pi over 3, uh, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and 6 pi over 3. And I'm going to stop at 6 pi over 3. Uh, why am I going to stop at 6 pi over 3? Because 6 pi over 3 is the same as 2 pi. Okay, 6 pi over 3 is the same as 2 pi. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to stop at 2 pi here. Okay. So why am I doing this? Well, I'm going to tell you why right now. First of all, what we want to do is let's cross off the ones that reduce. Okay, let's cross off the ones that we can simplify. Pi over 3, can we simplify that? No. 2 pi over 3, can we simplify that? No. How about 3 pi over 3, can we simplify that? Yeah, we can simplify that to just pi. So, um, but forget about that, let's just cross it off because we can simplify it. Okay, why are we doing that? Hold that thought. Uh, 4 pi over 3, can we simplify that? No, so let's keep it. 5 pi over 3, can we simplify that? No. 6 pi over 3. Uh, yes, that simplifies to 2 pi, so we cross this one off. Okay? Now, why do we do this? What's special about that? Well, this is how we figure out what the other uh, special angles over 3 are. Okay, so here's pi over 3, right here, this angle was pi over 3. The other ones are 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Okay? Uh, where do they go? Well, if pi over 3 is right here, okay, notice pi over 3 is right next to pi over 2. Okay? So let's uh, zoom in here. Pi over 3 is right next to pi over uh, 2. So 2 pi over 3 is going to be this other one right here. Okay, 2 pi over 3 is right here. Okay. So remember what we said earlier? Um, when we were just looking at the first quadrant, if we start at pi over 2, we move to the right, the uh, denominators get larger. So pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6. As we move to the right, the denominators get larger. Well, guess what? The exact same thing happens if we move to the left. So if we start pi over 2, this is going to be 2 pi over 3, the denominator gets larger. This is going to be something pi over 4. This is going to be something pi over 6. Okay? This we'll talk about later. Uh, and also we'll talk about this one later too. So um, again, pi over 2, move to the right, the denominators get larger. Pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6. 
start uh, p or move to the left, the denominators get larger, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, okay? This is something over 4, something over 6, and so on. All right, so we know 2 pi over 3 is here, um, so that takes care of pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Now 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, um, we can think about symmetry again, okay? So that's also another way to think about it. If you don't like that denominator getting larger thing, um, you could think about symmetry. So if pi over 3 is here, then if we reflect over the y-axis, we're going to get the other, uh, we're going to get the next pi over 3. Okay, so here's pi over 3, this is 2 pi over 3. Okay, now um, if we want the next pi over 3, we take 2 pi over 3 and reflect it over the x-axis. That brings us to this point right here. Okay, so 2 pi over 3, reflect over the x-axis, that gets us to the next pi over 3. What's the next pi over 3? It's 4 pi over 3, because 3 pi over 3 canceled, or simplified, so we tossed it out. So 4 pi over 3 is our next one. Okay, so this one is 4 pi over 3. Um, so now uh, we want to get the next one. So to get the next one, reflect this point uh, into the next quadrant. So quadrant 4, uh, that's going to be this point right here. So this point is our 5 pi over 3. Okay, so remember 5 pi over 3 was the next one. So this point right here, if we reflect this guy into the fourth quadrant, we're going to get this point. So this is the next something pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. Okay. Now, if you don't like that, um, we will talk about more ways at, uh, near the end of this video. We'll talk about more ways and tips and tricks. So again, just lots of tips and tricks here to think about for the unit circle. Um, okay, so that's angles over 3. So again, just to recap real quick, here's pi over 3. So let me reflect into the next quadrant. So here's quadrant 1. I want to reflect this point into the next quadrant. That gives me the next something pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. Reflect that into the next quadrant to get the next pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. Okay. Um, reflect this into the next quadrant to get the next something pi over 3. So that's going to be 5 pi over 3. All right. So you can use that reflection technique again. So that's you know more reflection and symmetry there. Um, but if you don't like that, think about, uh, think about the size of the angles. Okay. Pi over 3 uh, pi over 3 is an angle about that big, right? So what's 2 pi over 3? Well, 2 pi over 3, uh, let's move this to the side. 2 pi over 3 is pi over 3 uh, plus pi over 3, right? So what if I take this uh, pi over 3, so what I'm drawing right now uh, crudely with my fingers is pi over 3. So what if I take that pi over 3 and add another pi over 3 to it? Well, I'm going to take this pi over 3 and I'm going to add another pi over 3 to it. Well, that's going to put me... Uh, right here, right? So again, start here with uh, pi over 3. Let's add another pi over 3 to it. And that's going to put me, uh, ignore the thumb, that's going to put me right here at the next pi over 3. Okay? So that's another way of thinking about it. Um, it is kind of a pain to do that though with your fingers. So if you don't like that, totally don't worry about it. Um, you can think about it that way, or you could think about it uh, the reflection way that we talked about. Or if you don't like either of those, we will talk about another one later. But let's fill in the rest of these. Um, so now we have to do the stuff over 4 and the stuff over 6. So now let's do the stuff over 4 next. So we'll zoom back out. Um, we're going to do it the same way here that we did the 3s. Okay? And I'll leave these here just for a uh, comparison, I guess. Or, well, there's probably no real reason, but anyway. Pi over 4. 2 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4. 6 pi over 4. By the way, if you're wondering where these are coming from, just look, uh, 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5, 6, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, the next one, 7 pi over 4, and then 8 pi over 4, and guess what, we're stopping at 8 pi over 4, because 8 pi over 4 is the same thing as 2 pi, so just like up here, we want to stop at 2 pi. Okay, why stop at 2 pi? Well, because 2 pi, remember, is one full revolution, and that's going to bring us back to here. So we we'll just want to stop there. We don't want to go beyond it. Okay? All right. Uh, now, just like before, let's cross off the ones that we can reduce. Pi over 4, can we reduce it? No. 2 pi over 4, can we reduce it? Yes. So let's get rid of that guy. 3 pi over 4 cannot be reduced. 4 pi over 4 can be reduced, so we get rid of it. 5 pi over 4 cannot be reduced. 6 pi over 4 can be reduced. Get rid of it. 7 pi over 4... Uh, cannot be reduced. 8 pi over 4 uh, can be reduced and it's 2 pi, we just get rid of it. Okay, so what's left? Pi over 4, we already have that. Okay, we already have that one right here. 3 pi over 4 is the next one. 5 pi over 4 is the next one after that. 7 pi over 4 is the next one after that. 
remember, uh, the angles over four, they're going to be right here in the middle, right? So if you think about that symmet or symmetry and reflection thing again, you can think, okay, if this guy is over four, then the next guy over four is going to be the reflection into the next quadrant. Okay, so here's pi over four. The next one is going to be right here, okay? And again, if you don't like that, you can think about, okay, here's pi over four. If I add another pi over four, I get two pi over four, which is actually pi over two. If I add another pi over four, I get three pi over four, and that puts me right here, okay? So no matter how you think about it, this is three pi over four, okay? Ah, and what do we notice? Pi over two, pi, uh, two pi over three, three pi over four, okay? So yet again, another way of thinking about it. So remember, start up at pi over two, move to the left or to the right, the denominators get larger. Pi over two, pi over three, pi over four, pi over six, two pi over three, three pi over four. This guy is gonna be something pi over six, okay? And so on. Okay, so this was three pi over four, which was our next one. Um, what was the next one after that? Four pi over four canceled, so we ignore it. Five pi over four is the next one and then seven pi over four is next after that. Okay. So if this is three pi over four, uh, the next one is gonna be the reflection into the uh, third quadrant, so this is five pi over four. Okay. And again, remember, these are angles that I'm labeling, but I'm labeling them up here because we don't have enough room to draw these all the way around uh, like that. So just it's simpler to label them up here, so just keep that in mind also that now we're labeling the angles. So five pi over four, and then seven pi over four was the next one, remember that? Seven pi over four was next. Uh, the next one that did not reduce or simplify. So that's gonna be this guy right here, seven pi over four. Okay. Because it's five pi over four, if we reflect that into the next quadrant, that's gonna give us this point right here. So this is the next something pi over four, all right? Now, um, let's move on to, uh, so we wanna move on to pi over sixes, but let's, before we do that, let's talk about uh, this angle here and this angle here. Okay, we could have done those earlier, maybe we should have, but it doesn't really matter the order, I guess. So anyway, if this is zero, this is pi over two, what would this angle here be? Well, if this is pi over two, if we add another pi over two, uh, we're gonna get two pi over two, right? This would be two pi over two, which is just pi. Or just remember that pi radians is 180 degrees, which means a straight line. So if we're starting here, then 180 degrees would put us all the way around to the straight line, so this will be pi, okay? So you can think of it like that. Um, or just remember, uh, you know, pi over two, add another pi over two, I get here. Uh, well, what if I add another pi over two? What's gonna be down here? Well, this is one pi over two. Two pi over two would put us over here. Okay, two pi over two is pi. What if I go one more pi over two? Well, that's three pi over two. Okay, so um, remember pi over two uh, plus pi over two. That's two pi over two, which is the same thing as pi. So this is two pi over two which is just the same thing as pi. Okay, so that's why if you take pi over two, add another pi over two, you end up here. What if you add one more pi over two? So then you have pi over two plus pi over two plus pi over two. So that's one, two, three pi over two, okay? So wherever this puts you, uh, sorry about the messy handwriting, wherever this puts you, that's gonna be three pi over two. Okay, so one pi over two, 2 pi over 2 is another 90 degrees, 3 pi over 2 is another 90 degrees, so that puts me right here, okay? All right, so remember up here we said, hey, uh, start at pi over 2, move to the left or to the right, the denominators get larger, pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4. This is going to be something pi over 6. Well, hey, the exact same thing is happening down here, okay? 3 pi over 2, if I move to the right, 5 pi over 3, 7 pi over 4, this is going to be something pi over 6. Start at three pi over two, move to the left, that's gonna be four pi over three, five pi over four. So again, if you start at something pi over two, okay, whether it's pi over two or three pi over two, move to the right or to the left, your denominators get larger, okay? Denominator three, denominator four, this will be denominator six. Denominator three, denominator four, this will be something pi over six. Uh, all right, so that's that. Now let's talk about the special angles over six. And we're going to do those exactly the same way we did these. So there's going to be more to list out now because uh, we're going to have to stop at 12 pi over 6. So bear with me here. But hopefully you're following along and writing the same things. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6. Uh, let's maybe come down here now comma, seven pi over six, 
8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, uh, 11 pi over 6, 12 pi over 6. Okay. Now, if you're wondering what we're doing here, um, remember, we were just doing this to find the other special angles over 3, the other special angles over 4, the other special angles over 6. Now, if you're wondering, uh, why do we cross off the ones that simplify? It's because the ones that simplify are actually other special angles on the circle. Okay, for example, 3 pi over 3 simplifies to just pi. Well, that's already here. 6 pi over 3 simplifies to 2 pi. Okay, that's right here, which we actually haven't labeled yet. Um, maybe we can go ahead and do that. So this right here, this is also the angle 2 pi. So if you're filling in a unit circle, you might want to label 0 and 2 pi. Uh, you might have to, so be very careful about that. Okay, so this is the angle 0 and 2 pi right here. So if, if you go nowhere, that's just 0. If you go all the way around full circle, that's 2 pi. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so again, this was pi over 4. This was 2 pi over 4. 2 pi over 4 reduces to pi over 2. It's already there. 3 pi over 4 this is the next special pi over 4 angle. Um, 4 pi over 4 reduces to pi. 6 pi over 4 reduces to 3 pi over 2. Uh, 8 pi over 4 reduces to 2 pi. Okay? So the ones that reduce are other special angles, so we just cross them off. Okay, because what we're doing is we're looking for the other special angles over 3, uh, the other special angles with 4 in the denominator. Now we're looking for the other special angles with 6 in the denominator. Okay? So pi over 6, um, that's our 1 in the first quadrant, but we just leave it, does not simplify. How about 2 pi over 6? Yeah, that reduces, so we cross it off. And just a side note, 2 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 3. Okay? How about 3 pi over 6? Yeah, that reduces, so get rid of that. It reduces to pi over 2. It's already there. What about 4 pi over 6? Yes, that reduces. Uh, it reduces to 2 pi over 3, okay, which we already have here. How about 5 pi over 6? Uh, that cannot be simplified, so that's actually our next special angle over 6. Okay? How about 6 pi over 6? Yeah, that does reduce. Reduces to pi, which is just here. How about 7 pi over 6? That cannot be reduced, okay, so we leave it alone. 8 pi over 6 cannot be reduced? Uh, yeah. It reduces to 4 pi over 3, which we have here. How about 9 pi over 6? Uh, yes, that could be reduced to 3 pi over 2, which is already here. How about 10 pi over 6? Yes, that can be reduced to 5 pi over 3. How about 11 pi over 6? No, it cannot be reduced, so we leave it. Uh, 12 pi over 6, that can be reduced to 2 pi, okay, which is already here, so it can be reduced, so we cross it off. So what's left? Uh, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Okay, so these are our special angles, something pi over 6. So pi over 6 is in the first quadrant. Um, we already have that there. The next one is 5 pi over 6. Where does that go? Well, there's really nothing left. Okay, the only one we haven't labeled yet is this one. Okay. But again, we will talk about some things to keep in mind. So this is 5 pi over 6. Okay. What was next? Uh, 7 pi over 6 was next, right? That was the next one. So 7 pi over 6, the only one in the third quadrant here is going to be this guy here. So if the process of el uh, elimination isn't working for you, or if you don't like that, just think, okay, well, pi over 6, reflect to get 5 pi over 6. Reflect into the next quadrant to get the next one, 7 pi over 6. Reflect into the next quadrant to get the next one, okay? Um, and what was the next one? It was 11 pi over 6, right? 11 pi over 6. Okay, so that's uh, 11 pi over 6 right here. And uh, that is it. That is the entire unit circle. So um, if you don't like some of the techniques we talked about, we will talk about a few more in this video. But let's just recap what we did. So what we did was, first of all, we remembered, okay, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6. I remember those are the special angles in the first quadrant. But which ones are they? Where do they go? Well, I remember uh, pi over 6 is uh, the smallest one because it has the largest denominator. So it should be the smallest angle. Okay, the next smallest one is pi over 4. The next smallest one, or the only one left, is pi over 3. Okay? So remember, larger denominator means smaller uh, angle, or smaller value. Uh, or smaller angle in this case, but in general, larger denominator, smaller value. Okay? So also, zero, uh, always, it's pretty easy to remember zero. It's just no angle, it's nothing, uh, not doing anything, not going anywhere. Uh, one comma zero, straightforward to remember, because it's a circle, unit circle. Um, pi over 2 radians is 90 degrees, and that's zero comma one, because it's a unit circle, straightforward to remember. And then for these points here, remember, uh, they're all over 2. All the coordinates are over 2. And then remember, root 1, root 2, root 3, x-coordinates increase to the right, the y-coordinates increase up. So root 1, root 2, root 3. And just remember that root 1 simplifies to 1. 
So again, uh, x coordinates increase to the right, root 1, root 2, root 3. y coordinates increase as you move up, root 1, root 2, root 3. Then once you have those, you use symmetry properties. So reflect over the y axis, the x coordinate becomes negative, the y coordinate stays the same. Reflect over the x axis, the uh, x coordinate stays the same, the y coordinate becomes negative. Okay? Then to go into the fourth quadrant, reflect these over the y axis or reflect these over the x axis. Okay? All right, so that's uh, those, just a recap of the points. And then for the angles, um, again, we started with pi over 3, then list out 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, 6 pi over 3. Cross off the ones that reduce because they are other special angles already on the circle. So pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, uh, that's what's left. 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Okay? So let's go in here. Where do they go? Well, pi over 3, reflect that to get 2 pi over 3. Okay? Um, reflect into the next quadrant to get the next something pi over 3. Reflect this guy into the next quadrant to get the next one, and so on. And again, if you don't like that reflection thing, um, just think, okay, if I start uh, up here at pi over 2, if I move to the right or to the left, the denominators get larger. Denominator 2, denominator 3, denominator 4, denominator 6. If I move to the left, the same thing. Denominator 2, denominator 3, 4, 6. And the exact same thing happens here. 3 pi over 2, move to the right, denominator 3, denominator 4, denominator 6. If I move to the left, denominator 3, denominator 4, denominator 6. Okay? So uh, that's all of that. Uh, now there is one more trick um, to remembering these. So, well, actually a couple more things to talk about. So uh, let's go ahead and erase these here. Remember when um, we were talking about the first quadrant, we said pi over... 6, uh, 6 is closest to the x-axis. Well, you may have actually already noticed this, but that's not true uh, only for the first quadrant. Okay. Pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis. So here, pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis in the first quadrant. Well, hey, look at the second quadrant. 5 pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis in the second quadrant. How about in the third quadrant? 7 pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis. How about the fourth quadrant? 11 pi over 6 is closest to the x-axis. Okay, so notice that. Um, so this trick also works not just for the first quadrant, but for all four quadrants. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, another thing to notice here is um, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6. Um, the numerator is 1 in all these. Okay, 1 or the numerator being multiplied by pi. So 1 pi over 3, 1 pi over 4. 1 pi over 6. What about over here? 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6. Well, 2 is 1 less than 3, 3 is 1 less than 4, 5 is 1 less than 6. Okay, so there's that special thing going on there. So here, 2 is 1 less than 3, 3 is 1 less than 4, 5 is 1 less than 6. So the special angles in the second quadrant have that pattern there. What about the third quadrant? 7 is 1 more than 6, 5 is 1 more than 4, 4 is 1 more than 3. Okay, so the special angles in the third quadrant have that property. Okay, 7 is 1 more than 6, 5 is 1 more than 4, 4 is 1 more than 3. Okay, now in the fourth quadrant, and this is why I don't kind of, I really don't like teaching this uh, trick here. Um, 3, if you multiply that by 2 and subtract 1, you get 5. Okay, because uh, 3 times 2, excuse me. 3 times 2 minus 1 is 6 minus 1, which is 5. Okay, so 3 times 2 minus 1 is 5. 4 times 2 minus 1 is 7. 4 times 2 minus 1. 4 times 2 is 8 minus 1 is 7. Okay, so 4 times 2 minus 1 is 7. 6 times 2 minus 1. Okay, 6 times 2 is 12. Subtract 1, uh, you get 11. Okay, so 6 times 2 minus 1 is 11. Okay, so these do have this nice pattern here, but it's just a tiny bit more complicated than the other ones here. So here, just uh, 2 is 1 less than 3, and so on. Here, 7 is 1 more than 6, and so on. So that's pretty simple, right? But here, it's, it's just a little more complicated, so I don't really like teaching that, but I do like pointing it out in case that's something that works for you, um, and if the other techniques and trip, uh, tips and tricks don't work for you, um, then hopefully maybe that one will. So anyway, that's the unit circle there um, with lots of tips and tricks. And again, if you want a copy of this, if you haven't been following along, just uh, check the video description. There's a link in there. You can uh, click the link and open this, print it out. Um, so starting with the next video, we're going to talk about what's important about these, uh, how these uh, relate to trig, how they're useful, and we'll do a bunch of examples. 
Um, and what's really important here is don't just think of these as a bunch of crazy numbers on a page that don't mean anything. Uh, they really do have meaning and we will talk about them, what they mean and everything. And just keep in mind that there are these symmetry properties here. So remember, remember, remember the symmetry properties. It will make everything so much easier. Uh, know the symmetry properties and know the first quadrant and you'll be good to go to fill in the unit circle. And it really does take a lot of practice. Uh, so, you know, print out as many copies of that worksheet as you want and practice as often as you need to. Um, and that's it for the unit circle.